Special events at Let's Talk Success.org presents Marcia Powell with the Affinity Exchange, a matchmaking service, speaking on relationships. Have at networking, because okay. matchmaking is basically networking okay. in a specific area. Mm -hmm. And I find that I love people and I'm just totally out there and it's easy for me to go up to anyone and start a conversation. And I like to help people. And I like to put people together where coming together, whether it's in relationships or in business or in politics or whatever, good things happen. Okay. So uh, you have a, um, a growing and um, a building um, matchmaking service. Mm -hmm. I would like to know um, a little bit about your concept of just relationships and uh, even in today's market, what really mm -hmm. actually creates a demand for your particular services? Mm -hmm. Well, I, the demand, I think, is the fact that people do better with a mate in life. That the majority of people, if questioned, would agree that their life is better if they have a good working relationship, you know, with someone of the opposite sex. Okay, and it has to be the opposite mm -hmm. sex, or, well... Uh... Oh, well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's another area we want to... Okay. Anyway, yeah. so, so, but the idea that, uh, something you could say is, it's, it's a two-terminal universe, that if you really got into physics and all that, mm -hmm. electricity happens because there's the positive and negative base of the motor, you know. Okay. And in terms of flows in this particular universe that we're in, mm -hmm. that when you have two terminals and the flows flow, life tends to be better. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, but as we all know, getting a good relationship that works well through time, and that's something I like to stress, is that in my clients over the years have been looking for that relationship which does work through time. And so I've often, you know, I ask myself, you know, what, what makes a workable relationship? And uh, one of the answers I came up with, there's a lot of things that it takes to make a workable relationship. But when I look back and I thought, okay, I don't know of a perfect relationship. I've seen some that are actually remarkably good. But if you take two people and in living this mm -hmm. relationship as man, you know, as mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. two people in a love relationship, then what you want is where they make each other happy more than they make each other unhappy. So yep. That, that yep. would be one yeah. definition. That mm -hmm. sort of yeah. uh -huh. takes into account mm -hmm. the fact that it's hard to get it perfect. But if you can get the ratio on, on the positive That's side... That's correct, for the majority of the time. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Then, yeah. then you have a chance of, of making it work. Okay. But another thing I've seen, because, you know, when, when I sort of analyze divorces, you know, why are these people getting divorced? I think a lot of times it's because the two people weren't well matched in the beginning. And sometimes that happens because of a scarcity of people or who knows what it is. Or you're young and the hormones are raging and, you know, she, he's handsome and she's pretty and you get married. That's true too. Although... <laughs> then you find out as time goes by all, all the differences. So I like to think that the value of dating services mm -hmm. is that if you have the, the wider the choices you have, the more you can go, okay, I think to really make it work, I need da 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 The guy's over there going, and I need da 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 And if you have enough choices and you know how to date, how to court, mm -hmm. then you have a better chance of where the basic needs and wants are in enough alignment that the thing will work better. Okay. You know? Yeah. I um, definitely, I'm on one accord with you on that. But even on the relationships and people getting together, and you know, for whatever reasons they think that they get together, uh, a lot of times, even you know, without understanding or even growing into the idea of commitment, that you know, you have these um, circumstances that pop up in people's lives that you know creates these uh, emotional triggers, and you know, depending upon how stable the individual is in that particular area, that can determine whether you know it continues to pull you know the mm -hmm. thing apart. Or, you know, it, they constantly know collectively that, you know, regardless of whatever happens, you know, the focus has to be to continue to enhance and, mm -hmm. and stay together and, you know, thick and thin. And in fact, that reminds me of, I, because I've been in business 13 years, okay. some of my people, I have 120 marriages in 13 years, which is... Really, congratulations. Statistics, mm -hmm. this is my success okay. book here. Okay, excellent. Um, okay. 
But I do have now about 10% of the married people have gotten divorced. Now, okay. It's much uh -huh. better than that national right. average. Uh -huh. So one day I got interested in that. I thought, okay, let's see if I listed out these people that I know got divorced. Let's see if I see any common denominators. Okay. And what I spotted right away was the fact that a lot of those couples who got divorced got married real quickly. And they, they didn't do what I think of as a long enough test run before they got married, which relates to what you were saying, which is, to me, falling in love, that's the easy part. You meet and, and you like each other right away, that's easy, you know, and to go out and go to movies and go to dinner, that's easy. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. Now that falling in love may, may that have to do with just initial infatuation, and we will take up with that and about mm -hmm. the uniqueness of the affinity exchange mm -hmm. as we are rolling up to our PSA roll-in, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Our perfect situation affirmation with the president.